Eric Erikson's Psychosocial Theory of Development and Kohlberg's Theory of Moral Development are important theories that we have to talk about. These theories are, indeed, have an immense impact to our lives as future educators. I am part of Group 8 and we will be discussing a specific stage or phase in each of the said theories. Good day everyone! My name is lovely B. Mendoza and for today I am going to discuss Generativity, the seventh stage of Eric Erikson's theory of psychosocial development. Psychologically, generativity refers to making your mark on the world through developing and nurturing things that will outlast an individual. We give back to society through raising our children, being productive at work, and becoming involved in community activities, services, and organizations. Through generativity, we develop a sense of being a part of a wider and a bigger world. www.simplypsychology.org enumerated the key characteristics of generativity, and these are the following. Making commitments to other people, developing relationships with family, mentoring others, and contributing to the next generation. According to www.verywellmind.com, there are benefits, causes, and ways to improve generativity. But let us first talk about the benefits. So number one, better health. Generativity can provide a greater motivation to initiate and maintain healthy behaviors. Number two, more positive relationships. Erickson suggested that participating in the lives of others is an important way to gain a sense of contribution and a difference in the world. Number three, greater productivity. Generative people are productive in a variety of ways, including in mentoring, teaching, and volunteering. Number four, greater fulfillment. Generativity is also more likely to experience a greater sense of fulfillment. And lastly, increased community involvement, giving assistance to others, often in the form of civic engagement, also plays a role. Causes of generativity, pride in work and family, feeling included, taking responsibilities, feeling productive, and making contributions. How to improve generativity? Number one, participate in your community. Civic engagement can help foster generativity. So, volunteer for an organization or take part in community projects. Number two, assume responsibilities. Take on a big project at work or explore a way so you can improve some aspect of your household. Number three, learn new skills and share them with others. Sharing your skills and knowledge with others can also be helpful. And lastly, volunteer. Your child's school, your church, or community organizations are a good place to look for volunteer opportunities. People who have positive relationships with others, good quality health, and a sense of control over their lives will feel more productive and satisfied. Now, we will talk about stagnation. Stagnation refers to the failure to find a way to contribute. These individuals may feel disconnected or uninvolved with their community and with society as whole. Well. Stagnation means the state of not flowing or moving or lack of activity, growth, or development. A stagnant person is not taking an interest to productivity, no efforts to improve the self, failing to get involved with others, be and being self-centered. The consequence of being a stagnant person, you will have worse health, lower quality relationship, and decreased life satisfaction. How to decrease stagnation? First is explore a new hobby. Learn something new, find new sources of information, and look for new opportunities. 
Finding ways to combat stagnation can help you stay more active, engaged, and satisfied with your life as you age. Let's talk about generativity and rejectivity during the middle adulthood stage of life. Li Chai, Chinese happy new career, manages her household by taking care of her husband and children, and she contributes to the community by helping out at shelters. Now meet John. John, on the other hand, is really unhappy in his job. He lives alone since he's not married and on weekends he likes to Netflix and shop. Since Jane feels as though she is effective with her tasks at home, at work and in her community, she expresses a caring nature towards her family and towards her community. John, in contrast, experienced what we call stagnation, which is defined as the lack of activity, growth or development. This can result in him developing a self-protective outlook on life, which may lead to self-absorption and rejection of certain groups of individuals. During middle adulthood, we all have the need to promote the development of others. If we fail, it can result in individuals being self-absorbed. If this continues, they may reject specific groups of people, and this is called pseudo-speciation. to all groups of people, not just those that seem the same to you. We all want to leave something for the next generation, whether it be through our business, our community, or through our family. So basically, let's not be like John. A pleasant day in each and every one of you. I'm Crystal Duay, and together with Miss Kimberly Dulay, we're going to present to you the famous proposed theory of an American psychologist named Lawrence Kohlberg, the theory of moral development. This was an adopted theory of Kohlberg from the idea of Jean Piaget, who believed that the memory process of a child occurred in different stages. In here, we will explore one of the stages that we develop in applying our moral thinking skills to our actions and decisions in different situations that we experience. So without further ado, let's get started. Lawrence Kohlberg claims that a person may experience three levels of moral development, the pre-conventional, conventional, and post-conventional. Each level is divided into six stages, which determine how our reasoning changes as we grow up. Starting from childhood until now, we determine whether an action is right or wrong depending on a specific reason. This is what Kohlberg presents in his theory. At a pre-conventional level, we create a moral reasoning based on reward or punishment, which means that we do a certain action in exchange of an award or just to avoid being punished. In conventional level, our moral reasoning develops based on the external ethics in which a child performs an action to please others or to follow the rules of our society to maintain peace and order. Lastly, post-conventional focuses on the individual's understanding of universal ethical principles which concludes that our moral reasoning may depend on every individual's right and justice. As a fully grown-up person, most of us already experience these stages, but we will emphasize more about the second part, which is the conventional level, specifically on stage 4, the law and order orientation. Imagine that you have a car and that you are driving on the road. As you drive, you notice that the traffic light shows the red signal. Upon saying this, what would you do as a driver? Normally, our answers will be all the same, to stop the car. But what's the reason behind this? 
mainly because according to the rules in our society, red signal means stop. If you are on the stage 4, you would automatically follow this rule to maintain the order in our society. Another, killing a person. In stage 4, your moral reasoning will say to you that killing people is a crime. It doesn't matter if there's a good reason behind it since you only depends on the rules provided by the law. To further understand the concept, let's define how do stage 4 law and order orientation happens. Let's hear it from the next discussion. In stage 4, the child blindly accepts rules and conventions because of their importance in maintaining a functioning society. Rules are seen as being the same for everyone, and obeying rules by doing what one is supposed to do is seen as valuable and important. Moral reasoning in stage 4 is beyond the need for individual approval exhibited in stage 3. If one person violates a law, perhaps everyone would. Thus, there is an obligation and a duty to uphold laws and rules. Most active members of society remain at stage 4, where morality is still predominantly dictated by an outside force. In this stage, laws and social order reign supreme. Rules and regulations are to be followed and obeyed. Stage 4 shows the moral development of a person as a part of a whole society. Each person becomes more aware of the impact of everyone's action on others and focuses now on their own role, following the rules and obeying authorities. Society cannot maintain order if its members decided to break the laws when they thought they had a good enough reason to do so. In conclusion, Stage 4 or the Law and Order Orientation is where a child or individual develop a sense of awareness in the wider rules in our society. The rules and regulations should be followed and obeyed with no exceptions. This indicates that the individual's moral reasoning mainly concerned on what action should be done according to the provided law. Thank you everyone for listening and that's the end of Group 8 presentation.